Hey people, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but then again, you already saw my last update video, so let's get back to one of the reviews. Uh, I've been pretty busy these last few days, still need to write something for the Hudson Independent, which was going to be one of my internships in May, but I kind of figured I'd want to work at something different. Well, anyways, this is Sally Benelli. So this, this episode opened up with Fluttershy singing to her animals, where she surprisingly sings well. I gotta admit, the song itself is rather catchy and really lighthearted to listen to. But then eventually her friends show up and actually hear her sing. I've never heard you sing a solo like that before. Oh, because I was actually going to say, well, haven't you heard her sing plenty of times before? But then I realized, oh wait, that was in the group. Never mind. It was like a little flash of heaven. So Rarity asked Fluttershy to join on a... Yeah, to join the Pony Trump Quartet to, for her to sing. Oh, Yeah, have I forgot, did I forget to mention yet that Philly Vanilli has been one of the most controversial episodes of the season, and let alone the series, and not for anything serious, it's, it's regarding as Pinkie Pie. Now, technically she's in character, but her behavior in this episode is really, really unforgivable. But I'll get to that that moment when we get there. But this is just one of those first signs that this is not going to be a pleasant episode. Well, okay, I really shouldn't say that, but it's just one of those moments where I think the writers were taking it a little too far with Pinky. And and in, in the next, next scene, Rarity properly smacks her. Well, more like taps her with a paper. Well, making Fluttershy cry is not really, is something you're not really good at, but you managed to pull it off. So Fluttershy says that she doesn't want to join, and, and she says she'll join safely from the audience, but her friends understand. As we get to the, um, pet fundraiser, where everything looks nice and festive, And we get to hear Big Mac sing. And this is supposed to be one of the cadences I tried to come up with for drum line, but oh, pony ass. Just no thanks. But the rest of you were pretty good too. This is all I can do. That th this is the one word I can really think of. This is all I can do. But let's just keep going. We got a whole episode to get through. Oh, I thought you were all amazing. So much for helping me help the animals. Yes. It is wonderful when a plan comes together without any sort of drama, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a lot better than any reality TV show. So, the next day we find out that Big Mac actually has lost his voice. 
And it turns out the Apple Family Reunion, he loses it in a turkey call. Okay, to be fair, despite Pinky's behavior in this episode, that's actually the one, that's the one joke that made me crack a smile. But again, we'll get to there when we get there. Um... Well, you're technically using the same ponies. Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be a lot easier with a trio? I'm sorry, Sasha, but I have no remedy. So they come up with a solution. So they go to the core to try to get the solution, but the only solution is. Uh, and I can just hear the voice of reason screaming in the background saying, why are you referencing Worst Episode? And I'm sure he's probably screaming at me, why am I defending new Worst Episode of Rainbow Falls? Yeah, I said it. Come at me! Miss Fluttershy had an unusual change, deepening her vocal range. I don't want to talk about it. So yeah, so they get the idea to fuse together a poison joke to make a Fluttershy I sound like Flutter Guy. Flutter Guy doesn't want to do it, but Rarity manages to convince her with animals. Uh, that's always the solution. If you want to do something, just try to convince her with animals. So that night, at the pony... And we get to hear the full version of the song, and it's pretty catchy. Hey, hey Spike, did you forget to get them an apology? Well, I'll give it this. It's much better than any pop song out there today. Ugh, excuse me. So, so I guess because of this, everybody manages to get themselves a pet, even a jackalope, which makes you wonder how exactly were they able to get, like, a jackalope and a deer into their home. That should go over pretty well in the household. Oh yeah, we also get these two ponies who really enjoy the So originally they they decided to climb, but Fluttershy said convinces her to do it again, and then throughout the next couple of scenes she gets more and more excited and does a couple more scenes. I like this kid. So like I said, and Fluttershy gets ahead of herself and does a couple more events. Oh, and then she gets overexcited. But once they perform at Sugar Cube Corner, everything falls apart and. Turkey Man, you got some to do. And I love this part. Just, just listen. Turkey Cup. 
No. Here's your voice? No. Yeah. The cool remedy? No. Not quick enough? No. You need a deep voice? No. Point and joke? No. Flutter guy? No. Better day? No. And that shot Billy was living her dream in the shadows because she couldn't bring herself to come into the spotlight? No. I literally cannot stop smiling every time I hear that conversation because it's just, uh, it's so good. Oh boy, I just realized we're now gonna get into. Uh, so they head over to Fluttershy's house where she takes a bath, like in bridal gossip. It's where she's better now. Hang on. Just preparing myself, because now we're about to get into the controversial moment of this episode, Pinkie Pie's behavior. I know many people touched, talked about it in great lengths, and even Golden Fox did in his review, and I agree with him 100%. But, aside from that moment, there's been another controversy of which the writer of this episode, Amy Keating Rogers, was believe it or not, was actually sent death threats after this episode. And I may not like this particular moment, and in fact, I really don't care for it, but I am not one of those people who actually sent death threats to Amy Keating Rogers. Like, I... <sighs> how? Just... I don't understand, like, like, who, I, I, I just, I'm sorry, it's just that, I know that the fandoms can sometimes take things a little too far, but, but, I, I just, I, 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 I'm sorry, I just, I know fandoms can take things a little too far, but that's just wrong. It, it's just really wrong. I, just, I don't understand how fandoms can just like get like this picky. I just okay. Let's let's just get into this moment so I can go in the rant. Okay, Pinky. It was bad enough that you made Pinky Pie cry once, but basically making her cry again. Okay, play it. This is just I don't understand. Like how how did they think this was a good idea to make Pinky Pie this oblivious? And especially given her behavior in some other episodes, most notably the Super Size Three to Six Thousand. I didn't really like that moment, what she did with the Rainbow Dash, and it certainly wasn't nice here. Here it is. Like I said, technically Pinkie Pie is still in character, but it still doesn't excuse of making Fluttershy cry twice and not feeling any remorse about it whatsoever. Here. I mean, they could have handled it better, and it's in this entire part of Pinkie Pie, like Golden Fox said, is pointless. You could have taken her out, and nothing would have changed the story at all. This was just like the tipping point for, for me that, he, that kind of ruined this episode for me, like, even liking it, or even making it in my top ten. I literally even said, first time watching this episode, oh, and quoting the Nostalgia Critic in his Man of Steel review, I was like, Pinkie Pie, surprisingly, this is not helping. Would you kindly stop talking? Again, why, why didn't the writers just look through this scene again and say, hmm, I think maybe this is taking this a little too far. Maybe we should cut back on that. But no, we just got what we got, and it's still unpleasant to watch. I, this is just the tipping point for me in this case. Just, 
just no. And, yeah, and... Yeah, and Pinkie Pie made things what? work. Too much? Yeah, too much. What Pinkie meant to say was that you were really great. Did I say that? Thank you. It doesn't take back what you did. I got nothing. Just nothing. Considering that the Mayflower strike, I cried twice, not feel any remorse about it, or even bothering to apologize, which, by the way, you never does do later in this episode. Thank you very much. But, yeah, you only get one thing right. When that curtain fell, and every pony saw you singing, you lived your worst nightmare. Was it really that bad? Yes. Well, what was so bad about it? So Fluttershy actually does think of it as a good idea and decides to make one last performance, but only in her comfort zone in front of her animals. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Sorry, I just had to get that out there. So now we get to the brief moral of this episode where Pink, where Fluttershy says that she will sing, but only take baby steps at a time. That was a tough one to get through. So that was Philly Vanilli, and as a whole, it's by no means a bad episode. In fact, it's actually pretty good. I mean, the animation is, of course, stunning to look at. It does give a lot of world building regarding to, like, the animals, like the jackalope and the deer in the home. Mm. The songs were catchy, and the moral is great. Eight just really great to watch, and especially for Fluttershy's character development. Unfortunately, the major problem that boggles this episode down from being perfect it is Pinkie Pie, who is, as I said, technically is in character, but the stuff she says without not feeling any remorse whatsoever, just, it was just completely, completely, just, no. I've already just gone over the controversial moments, and yes, I'm one of those people who do, does, yeah, I'm one of those people who is offended by this episode a bit, regarding what Peggy Pie said, but aside from that, 
Uh, the moral is still great, the song is still catchy, and it's still great it character development for Fluttershy. And I just also like that there's also like a middle ground um, for it. As it, I will sing, but not in front of a huge crowd yet. I'll take baby steps at a time. And that's really a good lesson to teach, and I like that. So as a whole, Vil Silly Vanilli gets a B plus. It would have been an A if not for, again, Pinkie Pie's behavior. So again, Silly Vanilli gets a B. Whew. Well, that was a tough one to get through, but I think I did a good job. I'm Flick King Amer, and I'll see you guys next time on Twilight Time. See ya.